Surya. Yes, sir. Surya or Dr. Surya, how do you prefer to be addressed? Uh, I prefer to be addressed, addressed as Dr. Surya, sir. Dr. Surya. You no longer are interested to be a doctor? I am interested to uh, interested to be a doctor, sir. I am a lifetime doctor because I have uh, learned how to save lives and I have learned the to total course, education, everything, sir. Mm -hmm. So, though you do not want to continue the profession, you still prefer to be called as a doctor? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I always feel privileged because I earned the the pro profession. I always wanted to be in the profession, sir, but I don't want to continue it as a career choice, sir. Okay. Then why civil services? So, it has been my passion since my childhood, sir, to be in civil services. And this has actually increased only when I started the, my education because our college is headed by a IS officer. And my career there has shown me many things that uh, health is not just curative health and there's much more to health like preventive health and also me working in rural as a rural medical officer. Mm -hmm. All these things uh, exposed me to grave realities of other aspects of uh, society and health. Sir. Mm -hmm. So I think being in civil services gives me varied range of opportunities mm -hmm. to work for, for the betterment of society and to clear them. Sir. Mm -hmm. So that inspired you to become a civil yes, servant. Sir. Okay, interesting. I wanted to tell something more about you, this. Sir. Tell something more about you. Me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, my primary education, secondary education, everything happened in Nellore, sir. Mm -hmm. And I did my medicine from uh, Sri Venkateshwar Medical College, Tirupati. Mm -hmm. And uh, later I prepared for UPSC civil services for three years. Mm -hmm. And I given two mains in between, but unable to clear them. Mm -hmm. And rather than uh, curriculum and academic activities, I find uh, peace in listening, listening to podcasts on YouTube, walking. And I travel a lot, sir. Uh, I travel a lot and I fortunately I have traveled in 16 states of the country, sir. Mm -hmm. And I uh, like to experience the local cuisines, local nature. So mm -hmm. I'm a person who finds happiness in simple things, sir. Oh, beautiful. Good to know about all. Good to know about this. And I want you to comment on the economic potential of Nello district. Economic potential, sir. Economic potential. Economic potential, economic potential sir. Potential. Sir, uh, Nello has been an important trade and economic center since a very long time, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. the, Nellur is endowed with uh, three seasons of crop season because it gets rainfall in both southwest monsoon as well as northeast monsoon. Mm -hmm. So agriculturally, it could be a very good potential place and the whole place is named Nellur, where Nell means paddy, sir, in Tamil. Mm -hmm. The root word Nell means paddy in Tamil. Mm -hmm. And the region is actually called shrimp capital of the country, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the agriculture is happening inland, sir. So in potential wise, we can actually explore uh, the marine fisheries because uh, the district is endowed with 163 kilometers of coastal lines. Mm -hmm. So we can actually uh, more explore into marine fisheries. Mm -hmm. And also there are two ports now, sir. Uh, Krishnapatnam port as well as Ramaypatnam port. Mm -hmm. So portlet development uh, can mm -hmm. be one major important uh, source of revenue and trade could easily happen. Mm -hmm. And the district can actually be a gateway to Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia mm -hmm. uh, and trade can actually happen through this. Mm -hmm. And not just this, the city being very close to Chennai mm. can actually uh, take in economic potential activities which are actually spilling over from Chennai due to its, uh, we are just 130 kilometers from Chennai, sir. Mm. Uh, and the place is, at, uh, from the initial days, it has been economically very strong. So human resource of the state, uh, the region can be more utilized in improving IT enabled services, mm. everything because we are very close to Chennai and we can actually use the ecosystem, sir. I got you. And also the Tara manufacturing hub is within the previous Nellu district, now uh, been to Tirupati district, sir. Mm -hmm. So this can also uh, can be used to uh, improve the ecosystem for manufacturing all these. Sir. So the district has huge potential mm -hmm. to be economic hotspot, sir. Somehow, Surya, I believe uh, the potential is not adequately tapped. Do you agree with me? Uh, the state is still juvenile, sir, to comment that uh, we are not adequately tapping the potential. So we have the potential and this thing. Something called as Nelluru is there for the last 55, 60 years, right? Oh, Nelluru per se, yes, sir. The state and the district has improved a lot, mm. sir. But still potential is always there to be tapped, sir. Mm -hmm. Why Why do you think the potential could not be tapped in spite of uh, you know all possibilities? I feel it's being tapped, sir. Mm -hmm. Still, so there is always scope for improvement, sir. So what has happened until now, it has happened and still it, it has been happening and I feel we could realize potential of Nellu as well as state in the coming near future, sir. Yeah. Okay, I got your point. So uh, I could see that uh, your father works for uh, Ministry of Power, if I'm not. Not Ministry of Power, sir. It's Andhra Pradesh uh, State 
power distribution limited power distribution yes okay. sir ap transco it's transco. a state uh, company sir right i got your point so can you tell me some of the issues in the power distribution transmission in the state of andhra pradesh so uh, not just andhra pradesh sir the country has been facing with few issues of power distribution sir there have been um, the transmission losses which are associated with it mm. and power uh, stealing what do you call it? the power losses has been there um, because they are illegitimately using a uh, power and there is cross subsidization is happening with the power sir so it is given at very low uh, free of cost to agriculture it has been industries are being uh, punished for it by higher tariffs there is cross subsidization of power and there is huge debt uh, which is associated uh, with this discom sir mm. so this way these are the major issues that are mm. in power sector sir so you are not okay with the idea of cross subsidization of power so cross subsidization there should be limit restrictions and rationalization of it sir mm -hmm. it shouldn't be an open ended policy where uh, uh, free power should be given to everyone at all the places uh, there should be limitations to whom it should be given to which crops it should be given on because giving free power is uh, people are just not realizing value of the resource of power as well as more uh, ground water is being exploited for it so before giving any resource we need to make them aware mm -hmm. of how to use it all this sir. so mm -hmm. cross optimization should be rationalized sir mm -hmm. can you explain me the concept of political economy political economy sir yeah. sorry sir i'll That's read okay. more about it sir. not an issue not an issue i could see that you have completed your graduation from tirupati yes sir so tell us something about tirupati where you have spent 5 6 years of your uh, you know life graduation life yes sir so tirupati is a city which is bound on all sides with nature sir it's a spiritual capital mm -hmm. with the sri lord venkateshwara uh, situated just 15 km from the tirupati city in tirumala mm -hmm. uh, and tirupati is also home for geo heritage sites a uh, very close due to uh, long standing eastern ghats and the geographical things happening there so tirupati is very small city very clean yeah. and ttt takes care of all the activities happening there so i should tell it's city with the uh, vibe sir mm. oh interesting good to know all these things from you and also you are simultaneously pursuing your uh, masters in anthropology uh, have you completed or you no sir it's just been 6 months sir okay you are you are, have you gone for any field work as part of it no sir it's just been 6 months of field work happens in second year sir second year i i just uh, started my first semester ending sir okay so can you tell us something about the tribes of nellore district and their unique characteristics of nellore district per se sir yes uh yana these chenchus are all there in nellore district as well sir actually andhra pradesh has 34 tribes which are not uniformly distributed across mm -hmm. so nellore has yana these chenchus tribes are their unique characters i'll get to read more which about which part of nellore do you have yana these uh, near the seshadri hills Mm -hmm. all uh, penchalkona mm -hmm. all the forest region of that area sir mm -hmm. what is the primarily they are occupied what's their occupation farming as well something because most of the city uh, most of the district is now urban region sir mm -hmm. so most of the tribal have uh, crossed their boundaries of forest and now mostly living in the urban region itself in the nellore district mm -hmm. per se sir mm -hmm. okay okay and uh, Surya I want you to comment on the health trends of Andhra Pradesh health trends trends yes so Andhra Pradesh has been pioneer in health uh, sector and also in social indicators sir so mm -hmm. we have already reached WHO target of both in, uh, infant mortality rate and the maternal mortality rate and ratio as well sir mm -hmm. so we are also uh, better than all india rate and ratio mm -hmm. uh, rate and ratio sir with maternal mortality ratio of 91 and infant mortality rate of uh, less than 45 so we are actually doing very good with health sector sir and also andhra pradesh is a uh, pioneer can you tell me the specific numbers of it yes sir maternal mortality ratio mm. uh, is 45 sir whereas uh, all india all india is 91 and target is 70 sir mm. and infant mortality rate i'll see the correct numbers sir mm. what is that under 5 mortality rate of andhra pradesh i I'll, i'll get to see it sir okay any numbers related to anemia stunting wasting I I'll read more about it sir numbers related to them no problem not an issue sorry i also want you to comment because as a doctor uh, working at a primary health care center and uh, also somebody who has graduated from a prestigious medical college 
What's your opinion on this Aro Keshri scheme? Do we need it? Yes, sir. Uh, health should be basic uh, right of every individual and providing health services uh, should be the basic uh, governance part, sir. Mm -hmm. So, Aarogya Sri should be there, sir, and it should be rationalized such that public hospitals should be increased and Aarogya Sri services should be provided through public hospitals and reducing the number of private hospitals in future, sir. So, now we are providing around 3,300 uh, health facilities health uh, related issues through Aarogya Sri, sir. Mm -hmm. But we are, most of them are going through private hospitals, sir. Mm -hmm. But the money should be utilized to improve public infrastructure and public hospitals should be increased and all the services should be provided through pro public hospitals, sir. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's a retrograde step? We are a market economy, right? So on any given day, the quality of the services offered will always be the best if it is provided by the private sector because it is dominated. So because it is driven by an individual's spiritedness. But our preamble itself says India is a socialist country, sir. Mm -hmm. So the socialist credentials of the country will never lose and directive principles of state policy also direct the state to be socialist and be pro-poor, sir. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we should always uh, think of Anchodaya principle of Gandhiji where last man should be taken into consideration. Sir. Mm -hmm. So do you still believe we are a socialist state? We uh, per se socialist has been, socialist credentials may be gone, sir. But our ideology should be so socialistic and we need to think about the last man in the room, sir. Okay, okay. So, tell me one biggest issue or let's call it design flaw of the Arugeshri scheme. So, frankly speaking, I have worked at a hospital where people usually fake mm. the patient uh, inputs. So, they go for medical uh, uh, camps and they usually get other cards of people there and they usually fake the reports mm. and they take money. They submit fake claims. Fake, what fake claims. The fake claims has been high, sir. Mm -hmm. So what is government doing to prevent them? So to prevent them, now there is a central co uh, coordination center, sir, where uh, we need to take photos of every person who is uh, entering and we need to scan. Uh, like if they are inpatient, we need to send photo every day, sir. It's not just we need to... Uh, previously, it used to be like we just keep uh, Aadhaar card and ration card, sir. Now it has been totally digitalized and uh, tagged. Every hospital is tagged and scrutiny checks are uh, going on, sir. Mm -hmm. at every hospital in your opinion are they sufficient so there is always a way to cheat sir mm -hmm. but government is trying to uh, create uh, sufficient checks everywhere mm -hmm. sir so we are actually doing good sir mm -hmm. so you mean to say that fake claims have come down yes sir okay can you explain me the concept of information asymmetry information information asymmetry is the concept where uh, the information available to two people or two entities are uh, different. A person will have the whole information about the thing and the other person may not have information. So this way there happen different levels of content or information about one particular thing. So the choices which I make mm -hmm. are different because the information which I have on a particular aspect are different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keeping that information asymmetry aspect in mind, can we ever solve this problem of fake claims in Arabia history? So, uh, if information asymmetry is the thing, government should be uh, one having more information. Sir. Mm -hmm. So, with the public uh, data bill coming in and with da every data being scrutinized, government will have more data in future. And with Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission, we'll have all the reports of people who are entering it into every hospital. So, taking fake claims in future would be difficult, sir. Because if I am there, I I can I can't go to a hospital and can't claim for diabetic ketoacidosis if I'm not diabetic in the first place. Mm -hmm. So government has uh, it, all the knowledge about my health concerns through Ayushman Digital Health Mission already. Mm -hmm. So this way they can't total amount of fake claims could be reduced overall, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got your point. Let's say uh, if you are made CEO of our registry program, yes, so what innovations you would like to bring in the implementation of the our registry? So, uh, innovations, uh, I would like now as it is happening in Chutur, where Apollo and government is working in public private partnership. This way, every district there is now coming up of medical college, sir. Mm. In the same way, there can be a good private hospital in the same district as well, sir. Mm. So, good uh, health practices from private uh, can be brought into public sector and public private partnership could be uh, increased uh, and more personnel should be. So, what is happening is in tertiary hospitals are being burdened, sir, right now. Mm -hmm. So, if primary hospitals are uh, given with uh, good facilities and diagnosis happens there, mm -hmm. uh, 
there will be less burden on tertiary hospitals. Mm. So as a CEO of Arugistry, I will make sure the resources are equally distributed across. But our registry program is confined only to the tertiary and secondary healthcare. Our registry does not have any. Yes, sir. If primary cell centers are turned into CHCs, mm -hmm. all this can happen. There. If, del if deliveries do happen at CHC uh -huh. and uh, the hysterectomies, all these do happen at CHC, uh -huh. then tertiary care hospitals can actually take care of uh, higher problems. Sir. Okay. So this way we can redistribute them, sir. Like in the college where I work, the whole district. Uh, there are many uh, the, our college is associated with CHC as well as four PHC sir. Mm -hmm. So if we turn the PHCs into CHCs, burden on uh, our college and tertiary hospital would be reduced, mm -hmm. so that actually good number of cases can be diagnosed, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got your point. Anything else other than this? And uh, now most of the facilities are not available in Andhra Pradesh, sir. So we are going to Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai. And our registry is also given to hospitals in Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai, sir. Mm. So, I'll make sure all the facilities are provided in the states and I'll incentivize hospitals who are bringing new technologies and new uh, facilities within the state mm. so that our patients will stay in our own states sir, rather than giving our own money for the treatment and development of hospitals in other states. Mm. Makes sense, makes sense. And if Surya is made in charge as a health secretary sir, to design a new health policy for the state government of Andhra Pradesh, Yes, sir. Tell me five principles you would keep in your mind while uh, developing this health policy. Uh, fortunately, I feel the current government is doing pretty good, sir. I'll make sure that taken forward, sir. Like the principles which I keep in mind is accessibility of health. Where Andhra Pradesh has been pioneer as we have surplus amount of hospitals and doctors, both in tribal, rural and urban areas, sir. Mm. I'll make sure the infrastructure which is available is provided with resources. So that uh, health becomes accessible, mm -hmm. and health becomes affordable, sir. I'll make sure there's cap on uh, amount of money that could be charged. As we have seen in COVID, it has been seen that many hospitals have charged more amount of money for trivial illnesses. So I'll make sure there is some sort of regulation mechanism on pricing as well as uh, as well as other practices such that health health will be more affordable, sir. Mm -hmm. And I'll make sure diagnostic. Facilities are available everywhere mm. so that that may be lifestyle disorders or maybe cancers or all these are actually diagnosed very early mm. so that there will be less morbidity as well as mortality. Mm. So I'll make sure there's accessibility, affordability and availability of doctors everywhere and availability of paramedical uh, people everywhere, sir. It is seen that at few facilities there is irregularity. If doctors are available, there are no paramedical staff and if paramedical staff are available, there are no doctors. Mm. So I'll make sure I'll converge all the department that may be NHM or APVVP, Andhra Pradesh, Vajdavija Parishat or maybe DME, Directorate of Medical Education. There are three different entities which are happening with three different goals and agendas. Hmm. So I'll make sure that these three converge and corroborate. And I just stick to the principles. Stick yes, sir. The... I'll make it affordable, available, accessible hmm. and I'll make it more easy, uh, easy to get back. So I'll make these three, sir. Mm -hmm. Other two, I'll make sure. No more, sir. Okay, no problem. You are simultaneously preparing for civil service examination, Mr. Surya. Uh, I prepared until last year, sir. Okay. So I didn't. I was unable to clear my mains last year, sir. Mm -hmm. So I started working, and this year I haven't given any attempt. So do you want to continue your preparation, civil service preparation? If I get into the services, I'll surely continue the preparation, sir. Okay. Then tomorrow, if you clear UPSA civil service examination, will you leave this? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Then why are you appearing for APPS? You should not have appeared. You should have appeared for UPSC, no, right? No, sir. So I feel group one services would give me more exposure and more knowledge and know how of the state and would help me in guidance of policy at the central level mm -hmm. and which is more policy should be more friendly to the state in the future, sir. Mm -hmm. So this actually gives me an avenue to know how governance mm -hmm. and government works, sir. So this is stop gap arrangement. You're no, sir. To say. Uh, this is actually a platform which can actually take me to higher levels, sir. If you want to really know about the state, you can also learn by becoming a district collector. Yes, that's it, sir. As I, I was unable to get the opportunity, okay. this can actually be an opportunity for me to know more, sir. That's what you you will anyways want to leave this and go. If you, cle if you clear that. Not everything, sir. Oh, uh, if I don't get all India services, mm. I'll surely be here, sir. Mm -hmm. Except for all India services, I wanted to continue with group 1 services itself, sir. Okay, I got your point.
and good to see that you are also the secretary of Abzuda, which is often in the news. Yes, sir. Uh, Surya, recently I read something in the newspapers when the Rajasthan state government tried to declare right to health yes, and tried to prevail upon the hospitals, doctors protested. Yes, sir. And in fact, the you know a body similar to our Abjuda there supported the doctor's protest. Yes, sir. What is this irony? So, right to health in Rajasthan puts more. Uh... Excuse me, sir. Just a minute. Sir. Sure, please. Uh, in the right to health bill in Rajasthan, the doctors are uh, responsible to give treatments. So if they, if something happens to patient, which is at the, from the where the fault is at the patient side, or maybe if patient doesn't pay the bill, so few patients may not be affordable to pay the bill. But private hospitals there must provide the treatment irrespective of it. As you already so told, the market principles in the long run may not support this. Mm -hmm. This is term, sir. I'm not getting the term. The more uh, the asymmetry, the responsibility is more on the doctor, sir. Mm -hmm. They are thrown with multiple roles and responsibilities and more uh, administrative work there rather than actually doing uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. So, for every claim we need to make to the government mm -hmm. for getting uh, money, everything, there's actually more of a paperwork and red tapeism which is going to happen mm -hmm. and doctors who are uh, not okay with this red tapeism all this sir. Mm -hmm. okay can you tell me specifically what are the protections available to a patient right now in india to a patient sir. patient from all sorts of exploitation by doctors or hospitals so one this doctors need to follow code of ethics sir mm -hmm. And patients, uh, if seen that the doctors are violating any code of ethics, or if they see uh, they're not, there's some sort of uh, negligence from the doctor side, they can actually up approach through IPC sections. IPC? Yes, sir. IPC sections where negligence is cognizable mm -hmm. offense. So for every small thing, a patient. No, no, sir. Not for every small thing. Mm -hmm. if they feel there is some sort of professional so negligence. You mean to say that there are no other grievance redressal mechanisms available for the patients right now in the country? I'll, I'll read more about this, sir. Okay, no problem. Not an issue. And uh, good to see that uh, you, you are interested in this experiential solo traveling. Yes, sir. So, share with me one recent experience in your traveling. So, recently I've been to Uti uh, and Kadalur, sir. So, there uh, I had this opportunity to actually go to tea, uh, the tea gardens everywhere. And I've seen how they're actually uh, pricking how to how do they differentiate the tea leaves which are uh, ready for making brewing tree and they're picking it and how they wake up early in the morning go there and pick them and how they're actually sending them to tea factory and in tea factory i never knew the difference between green tea and normal tea i so now oxidized green tea is actually normal tea sir this way i knew more about tea which i was actually drinking since my childhood okay. this trip has actually made me know more about this sir oh interesting interesting so what is the special interest behind solo traveling so initially uh, i started traveling solo as a necessity sir like no one around me was able to spend more could give more amount of time they were only able to give only two or three days but i wanted to go on a long uh, trips so it started as a necessity and later i actually like more because there's no one to I need not care for someone I, and I can explore myself. I know more, I can know more about myself. I can know my strengths, I can know my weaknesses. So all this actually helped me like the concept of traveling alone. I can actually tag with new groups. I can actually know more about new people who are coming there. I can stay with local people. So if two people go, uh, two the people may not accommodate two or three people or two people cannot give lift to two or three people. So when I went solo, people are actually more welcoming. Mm -hmm. So if someone is going in the uh, same route, they usually give me lift in the, uh, in the same route. So I got to know more people, got to meet more people, got to talk to more people. Mm -hmm. So this way it started and later continued. I like the uh, peace which I which I'm getting through solo travel, sir. I got your point. Should I read from this that you are not a people's person? I am a people's person, sir. Mm -hmm. Because I am a people's person, so I was able to convince people to stay with them. I was able to travel with new people, mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. I'm not a people pleaser, sir, but I'm a people's person, sir. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Also, tell us something more about this microblogging. So, microblogging is like uh, there's limitation on number of characters and words. Uh, so, it's called microblogging, sir. So, microblogging, I do it on Instagram, sir. I do it with the name of same name, hmm. where I usually go to a place, click pictures, and know more about this, and write about the place in very short form, hmm. such that people are actually having less attention span these days. Hmm. So, they get to know more about the place with a less amount of uh, information which I am providing. So, you seem to say, you seem to claim that the people of your generation have less attention spans. May not be my generation, sir. Maybe of next generation of lesser generation of mine. Okay. So they have less attention spans. Yes, attention spans have been decreasing, sir. So what should we do with it? Maybe we need to change with time, sir. Time means we even we how do we means? Like uh, like they're having less should, attention. Should we accept as a reality? Like we need to accept it as a reality mm. and also we need to change with the time and we need to make sure their attention span should not be so less that they're not getting anything. So it should be, we need to strike a right balance, sir. Mm. Like we can't go in a protest that your attention span should be increased sort of things or anything. This We need to accept the reality that attention spans has been decreasing. Mm. And we need to make sure information is made palatable in lesser time mm. as well. And we need to make them aware mm. that their attention span should be increased. So we need to strike a right balance. So if I say as a society, if we have to do something productive, if it really had value to the society. Sir. Don't you think uh, we have to be focused on one thing for a certain period of time? If there's a certain long period of time. So in one of the re recently released reports, uh, it's based on an American university. It says, you know, American youth these days are claiming or wanting to be more of a public social media influencer or a YouTube yes, uh, blogger. Uh, and none of them are showing interest to become a tech pioneer, yes, which sir. used to be the trend in America in 1990s, 2000s. Yes, sir. So, don't you think it's such a terrible trend and this will have impact on the overall innovation potential of the society? Yes, sir. It will be, sir. So, so, what should we do with it? So, we need to make sure the education from beginning itself. So, we are actually, there is this destroyed generation in between, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, people were not able to take the transition very fast. So, the institutions were not able to adopt the transition very fast. So, educational institutions should be able to adopt to the changing trends. Hmm. From the initial stage, education institutions should be able to adopt to changing trends and education should have the, the recent trends as well. So that uh, we will be more like the present college students, if you see, they're not, oh, they're not knowing the recent trends of uh, uh, maybe artificial intelligence, machine learning or big data. So the graduates who came out cannot fit into the current trend of them. So they're left with no choice. Hmm. So now they're taking other aspects and they're finding passion in other aspects. If the institution itself has changed in the beginning and they're getting enough skill and training in the beginning itself, they can actually choose them. Sir. Mm -hmm. So this way, initial education should be a change mm -hmm. and they should be provided with ample opportunities. Like if we see today, the startup ecosystem is such that if you fail once, you're doomed, sir. Mm -hmm. But uh, the government should, uh, should provide the able backup facilities for them. Like T-Help is provided in Telangana where all the ecosystem and all the support is provided by government as well as other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. This way, an ecosystem should be created. Institutions should be created which are supportive and also we need to have a good funding facility from the beginning itself. As we are seeing in uh, Delhi, there is a program called Business Blasters where government itself supports a few uh, small entrepreneurial capacities in children of 8th to 10th class and if, they're good, the, if the idea is good, government itself will take up the idea and will support it and connect them with the people who, are, who can actually support them. So this way, small changes should be brought from beginning itself, so that we'll enjoy the journey, sir. I got your point. Surya, yeah, what according to you is more important, lens or the eyes behind the lens? It's always eyes behind the lens, sir. Mm -hmm. Lens can be anything. We can change the lens. If I wanted to uh, see shorter things, I can have sh uh, lens with short sighted. If I wanted to see longer things, I wanted to see. I can change the color of lens so that I can see things in whatever color I wish. Mm -hmm. So, the seeing person and the eyes are more important than the lens. Mm -hmm. So, who is a good photographer according to you? Oh, sorry sir, you asked regarding photography. Yes, yes. Okay, I told uh, the lens through which we see, we can... Yes sir. Please, please go ahead. Mm. So, who is a good photographer according to you? So, actually I am not following photography per se sir. I usually do click with uh, mobile. 
Yeah. And this is actually for my passion itself, sir. I don't follow photography as a. No, that's what. Who is a yes. good photographer, according to you? Person who captures the moment, mm -hmm. rather than who creates a moment, who captures the moment as it is. Mm -hmm. So we need not create a moment by keeping everything sitting, telling to uh, set people in positions, everything. But rather, who captures a moment with its essence in itself. Is mm -hmm. a good photographer. Sir. I got your point. And there is a lot of politicking happening around this. Um, Voluntary system in Andhra Pradesh. Yes, sir. So, what's your take on that? Should we get rid of that uh, system or should we continue with it? Every system has its own flaws and every system has uh, its own moles, sir. Mm -hmm. So, the priority should be to reduce flaws and take out moles. Mm -hmm. And we should make sure political parties should not take uh, advantage or mileage mm -hmm. in this sort of sensitive issues, sir. Mm -hmm. And so, people should be made aware about the volunteer system and how useful it is to take governance to those steps. Mm -hmm. So the system should stay mm -hmm. and people should be made aware of importance of the system and political parties should be brought to the table and they should be made aware that the mistake is done by the person, not by the system. No, Surya, I primarily consider it as a design flaw because in the era where technology is widely used, you know, to deliver even the do even the last mile delivery. So why should we create uh, one layer of a system with people where there is a scope for discretion and don't you think it's a retrograde step? Sir, uh, technology is in good pace, sir, but still people to people connect up should always stay, sir. Mm. So it gives scope for discretion? No, sir, because everything happens uh, through technology, sir. So if I need a uh, pension, it ha I need to give my fingerprint. Mm -hmm. So to reduce the scope of discretion, Mm. Technology should be used, sir. Mm -hmm. But people keeping in people there would increase people to people connect, and also they can be more empathetic and compassionate. If people these are more empathetic and compassionate, mm. they can actually increase the number of facilities what people are getting. Mm. Like I have recently seen in my uh, hospital where I am working, mm. the village volunteer made sure the Sadaram certificate is given to a disabled person, mm. and she gets uh, her disability pension. Mm. If not for volunteer. She would not have got that because she lives in a village which is a uh, which is actually 25 kilometers from the city who mm -hmm. can't travel for 25 kilometers mm -hmm. and she may she may not have got the facility of mm -hmm. a disability pension sir mm -hmm. so as there is volunteer system mm -hmm. he took help to the southern hospital and made sure she gets a disability certificate and made sure she gets a disability pension sir so technology may miss this concept of empathy and compassion sir got your point got your point so, Mr. Surya, uh, let's say if to, if somebody from Nellore district sir. and you have organized this medical health camp yes, sir. and they have come to you and they have asked you what type of diet should we be taking? We are already a diabetes and they sir. ask you for advice. So, what advice you would give to them? So, I'll advise them to take a very balanced diet where 70% of their uh, daily energy requirements come from high glycemic index mm. uh, carbohydrates. Uh, that may be either millets, such things, and they get good amount of protein. High glycemic index? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. High glycemic index foods such that they'll get a good amount of uh, food carbohydrates which release energy very slow and sustainable mm. rather than a very immediate insulin peak. Mm. And they get a good amount of protein such that 1 to 1 1.5 gram per kg body weight of them. Mm. Uh, protein is supplied such that uh, their must. Diabetes, there will be muscle wasting, sir. But these are the people, small rural people, they have come to you. So, if you tell this in, you know, such a high sounding language, do you think they will be able to understand? Sir, I'll Diabetes, make... Body weight, all these things. So that's it, sir. I'll make them aware and I'll, I I myself will check their weight mm -hmm. and I myself will tell, our government provides 5 kgs of uh, food drains and out of that, 2 kgs are millets, sir. Mm -hmm. So, I'll make sure how much of their millets should be used for 30 days for every person. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure a cup. I I myself will see that uh, what's the weight of the cup and how much millets will be fit in the cup. And I'll tell how much to cook, when to eat, mm -hmm. when to take medication, mm -hmm. everything. Sir. So, this way I'll try to change the lifestyle as a whole mm -hmm. so that the lifestyle disorder can be kept under control, sir. Okay. I got your point. So, I'll just read out a statement for you, Surya. Try to interpret that for me. Yes, sir. Hardest thing in democracy is to get something done now whose price of inaction is decades away. I'll read the statement again. Listen carefully. 
hardest thing in democracy is to get something done now whose price of inaction is decades away yes sir so in democracy every party or every political entity has its own uh, has its own uh, agenda or it may be like has its own role sir so when we see that uh, maybe like health infrastructure which was not built up in the earlier years we saw the impact during covid time sir or maybe gst which has been planning to be uh, introduced since 2007 was not introduced if it has been introduced in 2007 or 2005 itself the benefits would have been earlier and we not see the problems of compensation cess during covid sir mm-hmm. so did not foresee the problem there will be many political parties there will be many people many stakeholders in a democracy everyone will have their own priorities mm-hmm. so we can't implement a program because everyone will see some flaw in it mm-hmm. so in a democracy we can't explain the benefits which we could accrue in the future so it will be very tough to implement a program right now mm-hmm. so you want to say that democracy is untenable no sir mm-hmm. uh democracy has actually is very useful because we'll get to know input from all the stakeholders and we can actually improve the policy for more better mm-hmm. okay you're done with your interview thank you thank you sir